So my name is uh, Dimitri Dehaene. I'm an uh, Associate Research Scientist at Scripps Institution of Oceanography. In particular, I work on microfiber pollution. Why is it important and what are microfibers? Microfibers are little pieces of plastic that usually originate from us wearing plastic. All the garments and the textile industry generates plastic, polyester, nylon, spandex. And so as we wash our clothes, and as we wear them, they break apart into small little fibers. Those fibers go in the waterways, they also go in the atmosphere. And so it is important to understand how they move around the world. And so here, with this uh, pole to pole expedition with uh, Robert De Laurentiis, we are trying to assess what are the different particles, microfiber, sand particles, and others that. Robert will encounter as he flies from San Diego to the South Pole, from the South Pole to the North Pole, and from the North Pole back down to San Diego. So this will be the first very global assessment of what are the particulates that we found there. Now hopefully, we will also very carefully look at the samples for microfibers, because this is what is very critical nowadays, is to look for these plastics that are so small, they are invisible, and then you and I drink them, we eat them, and over time, these plastics build up in our body. And although there is no science nowadays that tells us whether this is good or bad, I don't see having plastic in my body as something that I want to continue. So I want to try to understand it so that we can manage it better in the future. You know, try to put a piece of tape okay and then uh, we'll put the pad on top of it okay and then uh, so that uh, to remove the pad you don't have to struggle and to you know shred it into pieces like we we did so okay. uh, I was glad that we were able to uh, to idea. test that if we can just make the length that is appropriate for you okay you know we can uh, have this on top like that okay. we can put it here let's just be uh, you know, right in the center, you know, and then you, you know, press it well, make sure it's homogeneous. And then it's a matter of removing this, uh, this, uh, this top piece. You can peel it off first okay. and then uh, use maybe the forceps to just finish your work. Okay. Right. And then uh, do that on, on, uh, on each side. And I think this is probably is going to hold well. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so, you know, Robert uh, and I met just uh, not too long ago and he tells me about his expedition and, uh, you know, that sounds fantastic, we can put instruments and everything and then he looks at me and he's like, you know, I can take something but no more than one kilo, half a pound. I'm like, whoa, okay, that's changing things, right? We cannot really work with fancy science and instrumentation like that. And so we, you know, sometimes you know, good science doesn't have to come with very expensive instrumentation. So we kind of brainstorm on, on what to do. And we decided to use sticky pads that uh, we'll put on the plane and as he flies through different legs, we'll uh, collect those sticky pads back from the plane and analyze them for what has stuck on the pad, uh, whether it's particles of some sort or microfibrous plastics. There will be four different areas of the plane that will have small sticky pads. Those small areas are the side of the wings and uh, the nose of the, of the plane. Uh, what we hope is that as the plane flies through uh, the different environment, things will hit these sticky pads, they will stick to it, and after each leg, um, rubber will collect them, preserve them in a way that uh, we can process uh, what's on there. What we'll have is a track, so yeah. it'll tell us at a specific time, I'm at this speed, this altitude, and this location yeah. for the entire leg, so yeah. we can go back and yeah. sort of de deconstruct the flight, yeah. give you information yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. But you know, the, basically this will be uh, from, from the moment you put it on until the end, you know, as you fly out of here, maybe on the runway, you might already collect, you know, 50% of the right. particles, and I will call, collect 48% as you land, wherever you go next. Uh, what's important is that the, uh, the particles will definitely be affected by 
uh, rain, any kind of you know clouds, and so if you have some notes that you can, you will keep track if you go through uh, through a very uh, stormy day. But it is important because these uh, particles will be kind of rained down by the water and by the clouds, and we expect less on on the on the wings for sure. Yeah, for every flight, I'll make a logbook entry and it'll mm -hmm. tell what percentage of the time I was in instrument flight conditions. So that would be clouds. Yeah. Mostly. Okay. All right. Great. So we can go back and figure yeah. that out as well. Pretty. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. 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 Great. Awesome. All right. I understand. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Yeah. That's cheers. Exciting. Yeah. Awesome. And we'll have therefore a uh, relative analysis of what are the different items that we find there. What's the ratio between sand versus microparticles or microplastics? But also, how does that change as you fly over a developed? country with big mega cities versus the Sahara where one would expect or one would hope that you will have less of the microplastics and more hopefully of the natural particles which would be sand. And so through this pole-to-pole uh, -pole expedition Robert has more or less 30 ish uh, legs that he will do that will go around the globe from the pole to the pole. Each segment will be important relative to the segment before it so that we can understand how did the particle characteristics change from one segment to the other. And so this will be very important to us because then we'll of course relate that to the conditions of the flight and all the GPS tracking that it has, but it will tell us you know, where are those particles generated from, where are they traveling to, and also how does that relate to the particles that we find in the marine environment. Because let's not forget, this is one planet, one Earth. The air is related to or reflects what's in the water. The water evaporates from the ocean, back, goes back into the air. It makes rain, it goes into the waterway. So everything is connected. And this is just one piece of the connection that we are investigating. So that we have this global picture, we try to understand better the mechanisms that drive the, the distribution of those microfibers in the environment.